Hey guys, I apologize for the delay for the long time and gap between uh, the last video and this one. Uh, there's been a lot of things going on. I, I had vac I went on vacation at one point. I've been uh, work has been all over the place. I switched some positions within the place I work, so my schedule is all over the place. And I was trying to f figure things out. I've been working on a project with uh, fixing a, uh, a clutch in a car. I've also was sick for a while, so there's been some things, and while there was time, it kind of just fell on my priority list as there were other things I really wanted to get to. But you guys need a video, and I have something I kind of wanted to talk about, so today we're going to discuss handling players. Now, the way I see it, players fall into kind of two big categories. We uh, There's a little bit, you know, I could talk about, we can talk about, you know, different types of players and get more in depth, but that's, you know, that's a different video. That's a different uh, topic. I see players that kind of fall into two major categories. There's what I call players and there's what I call audience members. Now, players, again, are the ones who play. They're the ones who engage. They're the ones who kind of come up with stuff. They they are the more proactive ones. They're usually the people who are usually fairly go-getters in the first place in, you know, in real life. And then there's audience members. These people are usually still pretty smart and great people, but they're usually a little more laid back. They're not, usually not the ones to take charge when in a group of people. And thus they kind of sit back and wait for you to give them stuff. Now, a good group usually has a, a, a decent mix. I, I, mean, I would say it's kind of an ideal I mean, there's nothing wrong if you have a bunch of uh, if you have a bunch of players and a bunch of audience members. You know, two separate groups. It really doesn't matter, and you just got to know how to handle them. And that's something actually I've actually kind of started learning a bit. When I first started the group, you know, really all my groups, uh, the band group, uh, my red group, I've had a decent mix. You know, the band group is a nice good mix. Was originally a nice good mix of go getters, of players, and audience members. I would say Sonia, Braden, and Sydney were usually fairly strong go-getter players, whereas people like Danny and Sam and Elias uh, and Esther really now are are more audience members. They sit back and they want you to kind of bring the story to them. They don't want to, they're not great at proactive. And part of that is they just, a lot of them have, you know, kind of stuff like, I'll admit, have stuff like ADD and ADHD. I'm not saying that Sonia, Braden, and Sydney don't. I'm just saying that if with these guys, with my audience members, it affects them in a way that I think that sometimes they don't focus on it the same way, which is okay. Again, I'm not condemning anything. I'm just saying that that's just how they function. So I have to kind of engage them to keep their focus on the game a little bit. And how typically when I have a good mix, I can just let my players drive the action. And, you know, I set the story up and I set whatever I want and the players drive it and they kind of, you know, they grab all the audio and bring them with them. Well, especially in the more recent uh, time, especially kind of ever since the, we, the end of the Fritzless campaign, more of just kind of uh, by coincidences as to how things start happening. You, you see, we saw it a little bit towards the end, but we started losing people like Sonia, Braden, and Sydney. We no longer had most of our players, and thus I was left with a lot of audience members, and I was left with this predicament of these guys would sit at uh, the table, and I'd be like, okay, so what are you guys going to do? And they'd be like, I don't know. I don't know, I guess we do this. Okay, well, how are you going to do that? I don't know. I mean, it was it was almost like pulling teeth. Not that it was like, you know, they were, they were actively trying to fight me. It was just a little bit of they just weren't always sure on what exactly to do. And thus, it was like trying to, it's like we got that kid who's like, I don't have any ideas. Okay, we got to have no something. I don't know. You know, it's like one of those kids that you were trying to get them to write something. But, and so this, I've had to kind of learn how to handle players. And this is a little bit of what we're going to talk about. Handling players and both, not just players, but audience members, you know, your players in general. Again, when I have a bunch of players, what I can do, and we see this with the red group, is what I just use, you set up kind of your story, but also ask your players, what do you guys want to do? Not just, you know, and you can ask outside the session, you know, what are your guys' plans? What do your characters want outside of the game? Like outside of this current campaign mission right here and now. And typically, because then you can, they'll say, oh, I have this goal, and I have this goal, and I have this goal. And, they, and then you can build content around that. You can say, okay, they want to become, you know, strongest barbarian. So they want this an epic, epic act. So, okay, I'll make a quest for an epic act. Uh, this guy wants to return home and, you know, uh, protect his family. Okay, we'll have put a quest about that. You know, stuff like that. And that's pretty easy to, in many ways, pretty easy to please. 
And when it comes to, you know, your session and your campaign storyline you've written up previously, they're usually fairly willing to, and, and rather happy to keep questing through it, to keep pushing through it, to get to the end, get to the end of the quest, reach the resolution, get the treasure, kill the bad guy, or whatever it may be. So for players, it's fairly easy. And when you have a mixed group, you can usually, by pleasing them, you'll please the audience members. Because the players, the, the active players, the go-getters, will push towards the end again, as I said, they bring the, the audience members with them. And as such, the story gets brought straight to the audience members via your go-getters. And thus, your audience members are pleased as well. Simple enough. Now, what happens when you have a chunk of audience members? Now, that's a little tricky. And that's, where, that's kind of the main stuff I want to talk about. And the one things I suggest are NPCs. This is a personal choice. It's worked really well for me in the past and how it's, how it's really working right now. As we talked about the uh, the Temple of Elemental Evil, you know, they're going through this tower and all these towers, you know, in the temple itself, it's pretty easy. They have a very clear course of action. Go to these towers, destroy them. Okay, that's very straightforward. They know how to do that. We go to the tower, we go up to the top, we, you know, we kill the boss monster, we solve a puzzle, bam, we take out the, we gotta be a little creative to destroy the orphan, that's it. Boom, done, easy, piece of cake. Because that's very simple and straightforward, they're able to handle that. But as we saw prior to it, prior to actually reaching the temple, when they were trying to, I was trying to get them to kind of go to the temple and get into that quest line, again, they were kind of not sure what to do. They were kind of twiddling their thumbs a little bit. And what I was able to use was NPCs, for instance. I had, you know, I could use, uh, I could use the Bartholomew's sons. In a little bit now, I'll say it as, you know, at the time I'm filming this, the players are done with the Temple of Elemental Evil. I know I haven't finished talking about it, I haven't finished posting the campaign diaries. I have some ready to film and, and go and upload. But I just don't. Ha I just haven't um, for reasons. I need to do some editing. I just haven't some t had the time yet. But so we're past that, and so they're kind of afterwards, and there's some stuff that's going on. And we have a Rillo and Kiko, and I've been using those guys along with the new NPC they've met to help drive them, help keep them pushing through whatever they want to do next, or rather, I should say, I, that's how I push them through my content. It's very easy, you know. It, some DMs they get frustrated when a when their players don't, when like, you know, their players, not their go, their go getters and audience members, don't exactly stick to the storyline you've written. You know, you, they're supposed to go to this town and talk to this guy, and he'll take them to the cave where they can kill the dragon. Well, the players are like, well, you know what, hang on. What if we, you know, circumvent and we somehow end up, maybe at the end of this cave, maybe they don't even go to the cave at all. Maybe they f draw the dragon out. And you had all these ideas, and now this is deviating from what you had planned. And maybe you're not great at if you're not great at improvising, that could be a big problem. And that can frustrate a lot of players. I know it used to frustrate me in the beginning until I got better at improvising and got used to it. And once I was used to it, I was able to handle it. But for those kind of, for those kind of DMs who, who struggle with that, having audience members can be a nice thing because if you use NPCs, your NPCs can suggest the things you want. Now, the issue is players can, their audience member can start to say, oh, this is what the DM wants us to do a little bit, which is yes and no. That's why you want to make sure you add in an NPC who might have a reason to say these things. You know, if you have the, for instance, Kiko, we know is, I won't say he's crazy, but he's eccentric, to say the least. And we have Arillo, who's a little more calm, level-headed, he thinks. He's not, he's got a zero for intelligence, like a plus zero for intelligence, so he's not incredibly bright, but he's level-headed, he's got a good wisdom. So he's got a good head on his shoulders. Now, if Kiko were to be like, hey, we should go to, you know, we should go to this guy and talk to him and request help with this thing so we can get over to this other place, that would seem completely out of character for him. Instead, I use Arillo, who's got a little more level ahead. And thus, when he says stuff like, oh, I think we should go to the king here, ask for his help with getting a boat and go to this place, that makes a little more sense. Or maybe he'll just say something like, I think we should talk to somebody in charge and get help finding a boat. Something like that makes a little more sense. It makes sense that Arillo, being fairly wise, would be, able, would be able to do so. And thus, it doesn't feel like I'm saying it so much as Arillo is saying it. Now, you can, now players might still think a little bit, okay, the DM's trying to help us along, but they don't think of the, play, the DM says we have to do this. It's just Arillo suggesting a course of action. It's me suggesting a course of action a little bit. And that's helped me kind of propel my audience members through the campaigns, even though there's not a lot of drive from within them. And I think that's kind of more or less everything there is to be said on the subject. You know, we could probably discuss more. There's other options. As I said, you know, when they were in the Temple of Elemental Evil, they had very clear, direct, straightforward directives. 
go to the towers, kill the monster, solve the puzzle, destroy the orb. Done. Rinse and repeat. That was very straightforward and therefore it was much easier for them to handle it. When they are outside it though, they had less straightforward directions and thus we ran into the issues that we did. So another option you can do is give them straightforward. But how do you get them to a point where they have straightforward uh, directions? That's where I use NPCs and such. And that's where I'm able to solve the problem. And of course, there probably are other options. And if you have suggestions, please put them in the links in the, in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say. I'd love to learn for myself what do other people use potentially to drive action when they don't really have any go-getters and you're stuck and you're left with a bunch of audience members who are a little more laid back. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with a little bit of hiatus. We will try and give you these coming out fairly regularly. My schedule's opened up a little bit more and it's kind of focusing and solidifying. Therefore, I should have kind of be able to find more time to do these kind of things. I do enjoy these things and a little bit was, I really wasn't sure what to talk about next until this came along. So I hopefully will try to brainstorm some more ideas so I can produce more videos. There are campaign diaries that I can talk about and I can use, so that should help us kind of fill in the gaps. Until next time, it goes. Thanks for watching. Stay cool.